making some very interesting arguments. Whether we couldn't argue that insofar as the euro begins to bear some of the burden of being world money, that we have not a more bifurcated uh, political world order, or a more uniform, but a more unified one. Uh, the euro is, uh, as world money, most located not in Europe, uh, non-continental Europe, but oddly enough in the city of London. Uh, that's where most of the transactions take place. The city of London is dominated in terms of the capitals that operate in it, the financial capitals that operate in it, the lawyers and the accountants that sustain it by American firms, American investment banks. Uh, 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 and American <coughs> houses, uh, financial houses of various kinds. Um, and it could be uh, that what we will see in terms of the trends that David was identifying is a greater de degree of interaction and coordination uh, between the Bank of England, uh, the Federal Reserve, and uh, the European Central Bank than we've already seen, which has been a lot. Um, and, and very interesting things start coming up then. I mean, I've been arguing to Sam that the crisis may indeed be greater than he thinks for the dollar because right now European trade unions are making some very significant money wage demand, having suffered actual real declines in their income through the German workers during the course of this decade. And they're trying to catch up in what is relatively uh, a strong Europe, uh, German economy. Well, this provides a constraint upon the European Central Bank, which has threatened that it would raise interest rates in order to you know, stop the knock-on effects of this in inflationary terms. Um, you know, one wonders whether uh, the degree of coordination we're going to see uh, amongst these uh, state entities will be of a kind uh, that the European Central Bank will be taking account of what a uh, contradiction arise in the European interest rates would be for the dollar. Relatedly, it may well be that the Federal Reserve, which is increasingly operating as the world central bank, uh, will need to take of account, in the absence of the militancy of the American working class, needs to take into account the militancy of the German working class at this moment as it calculates its interest rate policy. Um, so, I mean, that's, I think, in terms of thinking about whether this necessarily leads to bifurcation politically, I, th I think is, is questionable. Then a question I'd like to put on the table in relation to Sam's point about the current crisis. Uh, it's well known that Sam and I disagree strongly with Bob Brenner and agree strongly with uh, uh, Andrew Glynn. Uh, who has, uh, Chris just mentioned I uh, tragically died of a brain tumor uh, just a month ago. Uh, Glenn's explanation of the crisis of the 1970s put uh, the working class at the center of the crisis in terms of its inflationary wage demand, in terms of its resistance at the point of production to higher rates of exploitation, uh, and therefore to putting lim limitations on productivity increases. Uh, Brenner has, of course, his recent work has all been about challenging that uh, and defining the crisis of the 1970s in terms of intercapitalist uh, competition, uh, which uh, he sees as the source of a decline in the rate of profit, not the actions of the working class. Uh, Sam and I think that the crisis of the 1970s res was resolved precisely by breaking the backs of uh, the uh, European and North American working classes and trade unions, and by a breaking the backs of uh, commodity price inflation coming from uh, uh, third world states and governments that came out of national liberation movements. Uh, we think that crisis was resolved and we've been living through a period of capitalist boom rather than a capital period of capitalist decline or downturn. The question is whether we're now entering into a new period of crisis, which would also need then a new type of resolution. And I've been trying to think through this and, and suggested to Sam that it could be that what we're seeing is a uh, crisis in the credit market in relation to the integration of the working class. That is, insofar as the working class wasn't able to increase its uh, income on the basis and, and its purchasing on the basis of money wage increases, uh, it has been able to maintain its standard of living, although most of the left doesn't like to admit this, on the basis that it has maintained its standard of living in Europe and in the United States and North America, without doubt, despite neoliberalism, 
on the basis of credit, on the basis of consumer credit, mortgage credit, etc. The question that this current moment raises is whether the ability of the system to integrate the working class through credit is coming to an end. Uh, as evinced by the failure in the subprime market, and it, as, as may be indicated if there are uh, further crises that emerge in the credit card uh, securitization, uh, etc. That wouldn't be happening because of working class militancy. It would just be a dysfunction in the system in relation to workers' capacities to carry that amount of debt uh, and, and the financial system's ability uh, to uh, securitize that debt. So, uh, this raises large questions about the type of analysis we need of the current crisis, but I'll put that on the table. Okay, John. Well, uh, this doesn't.